So consequently, uh, so subjectively, we feel as though we perceive and respond to these perceptions consciously. <clears throat> consequently, subjective feelings of conscious control of these behavior is illusion. They are merely non-conscious reflexive responses. Dan Wegner, Dan Dennett, Terry Serginowski said something uh, to that effect in the uh, U.S. News and World Report article a couple weeks ago. Accordingly, consciousness, in, according to the party line, neurocomputation, is epiphenomenal. And we are, as Huxley said, conscious automata, helpless spectators, like Pac-Man. We're being controlled by, in this case, our unconscious uh, selves, and we only think that we're conscious, and it's, it's imprinted in the memory that we were in control. That's, that's Dan's idea. So is there any hope? Well, yes, and there's also data. And this is very old data from Ben Libet, and many people in this field are, are familiar with this uh, ex set of experiments, which still defy uh, easy explanation. Basically, he had patients under, under uh, uh, having uh, neurosurgery, cranial uh, craniotomy with their brain exposed but under local anesthesia so he could talk to them. And for example, he could stimulate the, uh, the finger area of, the, of, of one cortex and also the same finger on the other side. And basically what he found was that direct cortical stimulation, if it resulted in uh, what looks like gamma synchrony for 500 milliseconds, resulted in consciousness at the end of half a second. But if you stimulated the finger and got an evoked potential uh, followed by 500 milliseconds, it was felt at the time of the evoked potential. Now, he did some other, other studies with, thal with thalamic stimulation, which uh, basically said that if you have the evoked potential but don't continue with the uh, gamma synchrony for the full time, there's no conscious experience. So somehow, it appears as if the brain or the body or somebody knows whether or not this is going to continue. Libet concluded that there's backward time referral of subjective experience from the time of what he called neuronal adequacy to the time of the evo evoked potential. Now, backward time um, is perfectly permissible in, in, for quantum information, quantum mechanics. To put it in another context, we know that the brain fills in, constructs reality. For example, in the, the color phi phenomenon, many of you are familiar with this. You look at a screen, you see red on the left, then nothing, then green on the right. What you experience is red turning to green halfway across. That's what you experience. OK, no big deal. However, if you do this 20 times in a row, and the 21st time, you trick the subject and it goes red, red, the brain isn't fixed. It goes red, 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 red. Or if it's blue, it goes red, red, blue, blue, blue. Somehow, it seems as though the brain knows what's, what's going to happen. Now, there's a couple explanations for this. Now, I've turned this sideways. So here's the observer looking at the screen this way with time going this way. So here's red over here, green over here, subsequent in time. So this is what uh, is actually happening. Now, what the observer experiences consciously is red turning to green halfway across. That's just what I just said a moment ago. Now, in Dennett's explanation, retrospective construction or Orwellian revisionism or Stalin-esque show trials, um, they're all nuances of each other. What he says is that in real time, there's the red and then there's the green, but the observer remembers red, red, green, green, green. So the observer, the conscious observer, is roughly uh, a half a second behind reality. We're living in the past, and we falsely remember, uni remember unified conscious experience occurring in real time. And uh, this, is, this is his position, and uh, this, has been, this is pretty much everybody's position in, in mainstream neurocomputation, I believe. However, another possibility is that because quantum information can go backward in time this way, that the, uh, the signal can actually come uh, from the near future to the present so that we can have real-time conscious experience. Now, backward time uh, sounds, it is strange, but in quantum information, it happens all the time. And in fact, it's probably what mediates EPR effects and entanglement, that the, the signal when the measurement is made goes backwards in time to when they were united and then, and then to the other one. So uh, backward time effects in, in quantum mechanics is OK as long as there's no causal paradox, as long as nothing goes back in time to Kill, some, kill your grandmother so you can't be born. If you avoid those causal paradoxes, it's not a problem. And since the quantum information is unconscious in our model, then it can't be observed, so there's no causal paradox. So quantum consciousness can um, get us out of this problem of being uh, a half a second behind reality, living in the past, and having consciousness, consciousness be an illusory uh, epiphenomenon. So, um, there's been very little said about quantum, the quantum world here. Let me just uh, survey a couple things. 
Basically, reality is described by two sets of laws. We heard about Isaac Newton this morning, but after, you know, starting a little, about 100 years ago, quantum mechanics came in, and physicists thought they had it all figured out. Well, it turns out they were far, it was far from the truth. In, in the quantum world, quantum particles ex can exist in multiple states or locations simultaneously, quantum superposition, and this is used in quantum computing. Wave particles may remain unified over distance and time, quantum entanglement. And recent studies have shown that entanglement occurs at room temperature or warmer robustly, and that macroscopic objects can be entangled. So um, it's becoming uh, more and more prevalent, even in semiconductors at room temperature, to have quantum entanglement. And quantum information is time symmetric, backward time. Um, many people say, well, the quantum world is random. That's not true, at least not necessarily true. Measurement and decoherence introduce randomness, though the quantum world itself is not random. And, and highly ordered, otherwise entanglement couldn't work, for example. So the third problem, is there a scientific possibility for non-local interconnectedness, uh, fund fundamental morality, and a deeper meaning? But I just lump as the soul. And uh, basically, Roger proposed that a platonic realm of truth, ethical, and aesthetic values exist in the quantum geometry of the universe at the Planck scale. And uh, Freeman Dyson said something similar, mind and intelligence are woven into the fabric of the universe. So here we have uh, space-time cur uh, curvature correlating with mass at obviously a large scale. This looks like planets, but um, it could be at any scale. And in fact, uh, uh, curvature and correlates with, with mass even at, at small scales, and superposition sep uh, correlates with separation at this scale. Um, so in our quantum model, we, we make an argument that this type of quantum computation connects our, our conscious processes to this fundamental level of the universe. And what we have is a sequence of discrete events of pre-conscious quantum superposition uh, occurring at 40 hertz, 25 milliseconds and so forth. And so we have a sequence of conscious nows, conscious moments, consistent with uh, William James' idea of stream of consciousness and specious moments, and many other uh, people who said the same thing. Uh, when movies came along in the 20th century, uh, realized that uh, they were discrete frames, but perceived as, as, con as continuous. And uh, even uh, Christoph Kalk, with whom I disagree a, a lot, uh, he and I agree that consciousness is a sequence of events. And we think they're a sequence of um, quantum state uh, collapses, mediated by Roger Penrose's objective reduction, which is a process uh, actually occurring in the fundamental level of space-time geometry. And every time there's a collapse, there's an objective reduction, quantum information can go backwards. So this would allow for real-time conscious control of our actions. So our, our actions might be influenced by platonic values embedded in Planck scale quantum geometry. So this is a figure I used in an article a few years ago where we have a robotic algorithmic uh, windsurfer who's... Uh, who might be aiming for port B, but every once in a while winds up in A or C because of the uh, platonic non-computable influences shown here as the wind, but in actuality in our model would be uh, platonic information embedded at the fundamental level of the universe in the Planck scale. Well, what does that look like? Well, uh, nobody knows for sure, but um, basically what, I, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, these types of things, the young collective unconscious, Buddhist luminosity, luminosity uh, Vedic uh, descriptions of Godhead, divine guidance, the wisdom in Kabbalah and so forth. All these uh, kind of metaphysical baggage that uh, was referred to earlier could actually be there embedded in the fundamental level of the universe, which can be described possibly uh, through loop quantum gravity, spin networks, twisters, string theory, quantum geometry. String theory, um, you need a background. So by itself, it's probably enough. It's probably not enough. So the best bet is probably one of these, loop quantum gravity. And this is actually a, uh, an image of what uh, the Planck scale might look like in, in quantum geometry, where each of these uh, uh, volume voxels is uh, the edges are average on a Planck length, it's 10 to the minus 33 centimeters. And this is the best picture uh, that we have of what the universe looks like at its most fundamental level. So the, the potential for information is, is vast. There's 10 to the 107th of these volumes in our head. And the permutations is just, you know, incalculable. And it's, it's non-local. So wherever you go, the same pattern is going to repeat at some scale. So in conclusion, um, quantum consciousness can account for anesthesia and gamma synchrony, which I claim 
neurocomputation cannot, and I'd be happy to hear rebuttal from neurocomputationalists. It can also account for real-time unified experience and conscious control, and it can provide a connection to a deeper reality of quantum platonic information embedded in the universe. And one more point, PS, the same argument applies to evolution. Uh, the pi stack in DNA uh, is a nonpolar quantum environment, thus mutations may also be subject to non-computable platonic influences. So I'll end there, and thank you for your attention. Some questions? I think there's bound to be some questions on that. You seem to have enraged just about everybody with the, <laughs> with the, with the that was my plan. scale. Um, Lawrence, you're, you're just bouncing out of your seat, aren't you? I don't want to be confused with Richard Dawkins here, but I think uh, um, uh, as from a physics perspective, I think everything you said is nonsense. Um, and maybe I'm being too polite, but... Uh, uh, I, I, I see, I cannot, I, there's no way in which I could see the, the, the uh, to get quantum coherence you need very, very carefully prepared states with no I external interactions at all and I can't see a, 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 a system that's less uh, like that than, than, than the human brain or the human body where there I are interactions, that. but all, but hold on. But the other thing about this quantum information going backwards in time is just, the way you said it is just not true. It's a, I mean, we can talk about it later, but you're just wrong, okay? Uh, well, excuse me, but um, your first point is, yeah, the brain's too warm and wet and noisy, which none of which are true. Uh, recent reports have shown uh, room temperature, uh, macroscopic, uh, quantum spin transfer, quantum states, and biological uh, studies have shown enhanced quantum spin transfer with increasing temperature through organic molecules, the same type of, of uh, aromatic amino acids in the, in the, the core of the, of the proteins. And, uh, and uh, so it's not true that it's a priori impossible. And in fact, uh, Rich, uh, what's it, David Auschalam at UC Santa Barbara continues to show more and more warmer and warmer macroscopic quantum state reductions. And entanglement occurs all the time without, you know, without decoherence. Now, the other thing about backward time, I didn't, I, you know, it'd be more correct to say that in the quantum world, there is no flow of time. We're in the... Well, hang on. There, there's a lot of people who disagree. A lot of physicists. I'm not a physicist. Roger, said, Roger made this claim. Uh, Aharonov uh, has made the same claim of, of the dual vector theory with, with each collapse sending quantum information backwards in time. Um, the uh, um, Feynman uh, has, the, has a backward time effect in classical. So that's not true. 